What you're seeing right now was all created with the help of Glyph workflows, the videos, the images, even the prompts behind them. And you're probably asking, what is a Glyph workflow? A Glyph workflow is like a mini AI app that you or someone else can build by connecting what we call blocks together. Each block can do something different, like generate text, create an image or video, add music. Sneaky little hobbits, they stole it from me. And all this is powered by the latest AI models. It gives you a way to use the newest LLMs, image generators, and video models together without needing separate subscriptions for each one. And because workflows are flexible, they can help you with all kinds of things from quick tasks like generating a thumbnail for your YouTube to more advanced workflows where you connect multiple models and really push what's possible. Workflows can also be integrated into agents, which we'll cover in the future, but for now, we'll keep it simple and stick to the basics just so you can get a feel for what's possible before we dive deeper in the future. Let's take a look at a workflow I built using Nano Banana. I designed it so you can choose from a few different aspect ratios, but for this example, we'll stick to 16 by nine. For the prompt, let's use quotation marks around the text we want on the thumbnail. Let's put something like, my exact workflow revealed. Then we'll add a brief description of what we want, like a young man holding secret files. I'm gonna go ahead and run this, and here's the results. Something that normally would take about an hour or so to create, it gets done in under a minute. All right, let's try something else. Let's recreate this fun effect that Fabian, the co-founder of Glyph made, which went kind of viral. In it, his hair changes into different styles. For this, we're gonna be using two workflows, the very popular Nano Banana image edit model and Kling's new first and last frame video model. Here, we're on the Nano Banana workflow. What this lets you do is make edits to images and it does it in many ways. There are tons of use cases still being discovered every day. In this case, we just wanted to change our hair and keep everything else the same. So I'll drop my image here and add a prompt, something like, give this man long blonde hair. Then I'll just click run this workflow. You can actually keep it pretty simple because this workflow has Claude running in the background to automatically enhance your prompt. And there I am with beautiful long blonde hair. So go ahead and save that image in the folder. We're gonna need it. Now let's head over to a Kling 2.1 first and last frame workflow. This one is also powered by an LLM, but it works a little different. It analyzes your two images and generates a prompt that describes how the first frame should transition into the last. So you don't even need to type in a prompt this time. I'll upload my original selfie as my first frame and my Nano Banana generated image as my last frame. Then just hit run. And there you go. It's a really fun effect and it's pretty fast and easy to do. There are workflows for just about everything, birthday cards, meme generators, music makers, and the community super active, constantly building new and unique workflows every day. Okay, now that we have a basic understanding of how workflows work, let's try building one. We'll start by using the workflow using the Quinn image model, and we'll add a LoRa so it generates images in a specific style. First, we're gonna come up here to where it says build, and then we're gonna choose workflow. From here, we'll begin building our blocks. Click on the plus icon to open a window where you can choose the type of block you wanna add. And you'll see there are quite a few options. For our use case, we wanna add something that lets us input a prompt. So choose a text block. At the top, you can rename this block and I'm gonna call it prompt. Now click on the plus icon again to add another block. This time, choose an image generator block. Under model, you'll see several options. We'll be using Quinn image and we'll select the one that includes LoRa support. Next, we want this image generator block to receive the prompt from our text block. To do that, go to the prompt section inside the image generator block and you should be able to see here that it says variables. And you'll see that it shows you the previous block that we created. By clicking on this variable, you should see the highlighted word in the prompt area here. That just means anything you type in the prompt block will be applied here. This could be super useful because we can add our LoRa trigger words here so that it will always be applied to our generator without having to type in the trigger words in our prompt block. Once you come down here, you can adjust the image resolution manually if you like. I'm gonna keep the default 1024 by 1024 pixels. Now we need a URL link to Alora. One place where you can find Loras is on Hug and Face. You can just Google search for the official Quen image page, come over here and click on adapters, and there should be many Loras to choose from here. So go ahead and click on one that you like. Here on the model card, you'll usually find somewhere on the page the trigger words needed to use the LoRa effectively. Try to keep this in mind because we're gonna need the trigger word later. To get the link we would need for our workflow, go to files and versions, click on the file that ends in .safe tensors, and copy the download link. Alternatively, you can check out civitai.com. There's actually a Polaroid LoRa there that I like to use. Just make sure you're picking a Quinn LoRa. It typically tells you here in the base model what kind of LoRa it is. When you're on the LoRa page, just right click on the download icon and select copy link. 
Once you have the link, head back to glyph.app, click on add LoRa in your image generator block and simply paste the URL there. Now just type the trigger word into the prompt section of the image generator block. This ensures the trigger words are applied automatically no matter what prompt you enter. And that's it. Let's go ahead and test it by typing in a prompt and running the workflow. I'm gonna type something very simple. A man riding a motorcycle. And there you go. It works. We've officially built our first workflow. But before you publish this, you probably wanna rename this. If you'd like to add a thumbnail to this, click on the three dots here, select edit cover image and drop in an image. And now we can publish this and you'll find it under my studio workflows. And if you ever need help to figure out how a workflow can be structured, you can always try finding a workflow made by someone else and click remix to see how it's built. That's the beauty of Glyph. You have a wide selection of workflows created by our community. So if you don't feel comfortable creating your own just yet, you can always use a remix one that's already out there. Hope you found this video helpful. We'll have more videos coming up on other topics. So look out for those by subscribing. All right, until next time, take care.